I'm not gonna have any videos playing. <laughs> it's a blue screen. Seems cool. Right? Yeah. Boom, stick it, check it, one, two. Sibilance, sibilance. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Chris Rager. Uh, I'm a voice actor. This is the, uh, I guess the panel said it was the auditioning, what was it called again, Josh? Introduction to auditions. Introduction to auditions. Well, basically, it's more of a, it's, it's that and a bit of the business of voice acting uh, panel, sort of the ins and outs. Uh, we will kind of definitely uh, cover the audition portions and kind of go through what auditions are like and what to look for in auditions, the do's and don'ts of the auditions, uh, those types of things. So uh, let's kind of get started right into that, guys. What do you think? What do you think is the most important thing about an audition? Anybody? Anyone want to chime in? What do you think is the most important part? Yes, sir. Presentation. Presentation. That's not bad. That's not bad. That, that is, it is it is a good part of it. Anyone else? Being on time. Being on time. That's huge. Huge. And by being on time, that really means what? Don't be late. Early. Being, being a little bit early. How early do you think? 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes, maybe 30 at the most. You definitely don't want to show up four hours before your audition. Do not do that. You will be sent home. And all the directors up there will get word of the creepy guy who showed up four hours before to their audition, and then no one will want to see that guy again. So, step one in the audition process is show up on time. Giving yourself a little bit of time to look over the audition signs. Because in the world of auditions, you know, th this is maybe more specific to voice acting, but if you really think about the audition process from the scope of theater to, uh, to, to a movie, to doing a film, to doing a voiceover, the, the, the parameters all change. When you get a script, when you hear about an audition for a play, you get that months in advance sometimes. You can read the entire play. I have friends of mine who go into auditions with the part they want already memorized because they have months to prepare and go for it and do just that. Uh, when you're doing a film, it's probably weeks, days, maybe. Uh, when, you're, when you're voice acting, uh, it's minutes. That's how much time you have. It's seconds, and even in some cases, that's how much time you have to spend with the script. All the while, still needing to give that performance of that you have had that script for months, and that you you have nuances to this character and stuff like that. So, in that world of acting, I always recommend to people that that's where you start. You start with theater, so you kind of understand that process of what it is to take on a character, understand the character, make choices for that character. Uh, and to make mistake, mistakes as an actor, you know, to kind of go through that process because you have time to make mistakes. Uh, and film, less so. I mean, so theater, film, voiceover, and just gets smaller. The time frame is smaller and smaller and smaller. Uh, step two, I really want to eat this kind part of what I'm talking, right? So uh, I'm going to have to put it down because the chocolate is melting. <laughs> Sorry, it's something I figured out. Okay, so, uh, step two uh, in the audition process is to show off. You know, don't go in there and be not energetic. Really, that's what I'm trying to say. Have that energy, have that confidence, be professional. Be able to show the directors and the people around you who are at that audition and working for you know, let's say it's Funimation, working for Funimation, uh, you want to see those people, uh, those people want to see you as a professional, all the way up to the receptionist, to the guy you pass in the hallway, you don't even know who that is, to the engineer, to the director themselves. Um, you really want to pay close attention to maybe uh, if there are any notes that the director has put in those audition sides as well. I know my friend Joel McDonald, uh, he likes to put in uh, a little thing about asking the engineer for a beverage. Mm. And uh, he also likes to tell the story about out of uh, 500 auditions that he saw in a week, you know, how many people do you think asked the engineer for a beverage? 
How many? Out of 500 people in a week, y'all, just in 500 people that week, how many people do you think came in and read that director's note that he had on the audition side that said, make sure to ask the engineer if they would like a beverage? How many people do you think did probably, that? Probably only a few. A few. Five. Okay. Five people. You know how many, how many of those five people Joel gave a part to? Five. <laughs> You know, sometimes it's not necessarily about talent. It's being able to focus and uh, and uh, and take direction and and be be perceptive. You know, be willing to take risks because a lot of those people probably felt it was uncomfortable to ask the engineer for a beverage. They thought that was silly. But the ones who didn't, they got a part. They were willing to take a risk. They were willing to go for it. Um, third most important thing I think in the audition process is uh, after you've shown up on time prepared yourself, you got in, you showed off on the audition, uh, is to go home. Do not hang out and linger and chill out after the audition. Because uh, you're not needed anymore. And if you're still hanging around there just so that you want, because you like the place, like, and let's say it's Funimation, because some of these some of these stories I'm pulling from Funimation, because these are the very things that have, have happened. Uh, as people hang out. They want to take selfies next to the uh, the big metal owl from Full Metal Alchemist. And the big uh, picture of Goku on the wall, you know. Go into the, they want to go into the booth and like, can you take a, take a picture of me like I'm voice acting in this microphone? No, dude. Get out. Uh, so, uh, I would say that. Show up on time. Show off while you're there. And when you're done, say thank you and get out. Go home. Um, that's, those are, I mean, as far as like the do's and don'ts, that's really all you need to do. Uh, I would say beforehand, again, as far as the preparedness that it takes to uh, understand going through the audition process, a lot of it sometimes is experience. Even I myself these days uh, still walk out of auditions sort of perplexed on exactly how I did or how I didn't do. Uh, and you just don't really know. Because I always tell people, uh, there's a thousand reasons they didn't want you. A thousand. And they usually happen pretty quick. Uh, no, 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 okay, no, no. It was, it, it's, it's quick, it happens fast. But when, when they hear it, they know. Oh, that was it. It, it just, it happens very quickly, and it, you know, it's instantaneous almost. Oh, that's the voice I want. That's the one, that's it. You did something there that now I know that that's what I want. Um, so how many of you guys out here have some performance experience outside? Uh, like in the, in the theater, theater experience, yes? Theater? How many, how, many, uh, how many years of theater experience do you think you have? Like three or four. Yeah? Is that through high school and college or? Uh, I'm not in college. You're not in college yet? No. Sorry, I don't have my glasses no, on. I can't crack my job. Uh, so in high school, you're taking some theater there. Well, that's good. That's where you want to start. That's a great place to start. College as well is a great place to start. At the end of the day, if you want to be a voice actor, and it's not necessarily a term I, I care for, acting is acting, using my just my voice is one aspect of it. But I, again, I say to those people, I'm not just using my voice. I'm still using my entire body to act. You just don't see it. In a way, you've got to do it within this confined space. You've got to find a new way to emphasize certain things. And physicality definitely can uh, uh, em emphasize and help enhance one's performance. But again, you have to realize you're in a booth, so throwing punches and kicks isn't something you really can do. But but having that sort of uh, that muscle memory of those muscles that it takes to throw those punches or kicks or getting you know getting punched and kicked. And, all those things, I mean, you have to think when, uh, uh, of all the ridiculous noises that you have to make, and sometimes people really find those things embarrassing, and so you kind of have to get over making, you know, you, these attack, or being attacked noises, or getting punched, getting kicked, you really gotta enjoy and find and have some fun uh, in those, so. Uh, I don't wanna go on too much longer about the audition process, but I'm sure you guys have some questions. If anyone has a question, we can kind of, maybe uh, I will answer those questions. Because <laughs> if you don't have a question, we're just going to end this right now. Yeah.
Yes, the question in the back. We'll start with you in the back, sir. Yeah, uh, I heard from uh, several different uh, voice actors that uh, when you uh, voice act for like hours at a time and you completely the uh, story of your voice, do you ever have to uh, do uh, multiple uh, additions of a uh, bad voice or anything? Multiple takes of stuff? Yeah. Is that like you're having to redo a line over yeah. and over again or something like that? Yeah. Uh, I certainly have. Uh, I will say for a particular character I played in a video game called Borderlands 2, his name's Mr. Tor, he screams a lot. That's all he does is scream. There it's got like uh, But I will say it is quite strenuous on the voice. Um, and so as an actor, I try to make emphasize my focus on being let's get this in one take. Uh, on occasion there might have been a technical difficulty or I am screaming and I am pretty loud sometimes, you know, something gets that peaks and they can't quite use it. So uh, I'm, I'm, on a few occasions, they would chime back in to me in my head, so the headset and the, and the booth would be like, uh, yeah, Chris, look, man, we're really sorry, but can you do that one again, please? And then eventually they were like, just do it again, scream, hurt your voice, kill yourself, we don't care, just scream, make it happen. But uh, so. Uh, you as the actor, as the performer, you kind of understand your body pretty well. You, you, uh, you know when your voice is beginning to give out, or there's a little twinge there. And, and uh, but there are things that you can kind of do to maintain and prolong. Uh, there's sprays and uh, teas and all kinds of things that, uh, for Torque in particular, I did bring something in the booth like that with me, like some sprays, just to kind of. Uh, if, we're, if, not, if, if, if not for just maybe just a numbing effect in some way. Uh, but you also want to be careful too, because after I would do a voice like Torg, uh, that meant that I, I couldn't work on any other projects for probably two or three days, because my voice just wasn't right. So you also want to make sure that you're playing that balance of, I'm screaming and freaking out, and okay, then after that, I really got to chill out, or it's going to be longer than two or three days, and then I really can't work. But that is part of the uh, what was going on with that uh, strike in LA amongst uh, voice actors and then some of those video game companies was hazard pay. I scream, I yell, I holler, I strain my voice for you guys in the booth, you know, multiple takes on things. And, you know, we need to be compensated for that because at the end of the day, this goes out, I'm out of a gig, I'm out of a job, there's no moss. So. Uh, what else, guys? Yes. If you audition in the booth and you get the role, but you kind of forgot what voice you did, can you like ask them to replay your audition? Or that is an excellent question, and yes, they will do that for you. Uh, they will definitely give you what's called a reference. Uh, I'll even have already booked a part, and because uh, Funimation does a lot of these right now, they'll be simul dub. So you kind of bounce from booth to booth. You know, I've got, oh, I've got a few lines in this one, a few lines in that one. And, and then sometimes that character's not in that episode, so you don't always exactly remember what what somebody sounded like. Uh, so yes, they will always play you a reference, so you can kind of like, okay, that's where that voice is. I remember that guy, he's, he's a little more gruff, or this guy is very proper, or, you know, whatever it is. Um, also in anime, uh, I, I may not be necessarily the best example of this, or my friend Josh Martin over here. Uh, playing very two very charactery type roles in a show called Dragon Ball Z, but at the end of the day, uh, I'd say most anime is uh, when you are called upon to voice a character. It's only a slight variation of your own voice. You might want to lighten it up, toughen it up, gruffen it up, or you know, make it lighter, make it heavier. Uh, those kinds of things: younger, older, heavier. Um, but those are all th things done within the body and within you know, where you place your breath and where you push that breath out of your face, <laughs> you know? Uh, so as a voice actor and uh, as a performer in general, as an actor, breathing is incredibly important, not just in voice acting, in acting in general, breathing and feeling the breath, really feeling and understanding where your breath happens. You know, when think about the emotions, when you have different emotions, what does your breath do? And really, as an actor, breath can sort of be an instigator for those emo emotions. You can have a sense of memory with breath to know what it is to feel despair and those kinds of things. And just and uh, 
begin to breathe that way. And sure as shit, man, you'll start feeling that way. And then, you're, then you start going, you're getting there. You know, ground yourself, breathe into those things. So I'm getting all heavy and deep and stuff, man, but, uh, but that's what it is. Acting, acting, learning to be an actor and becoming an actor is really about understanding yourself and you as a person and who you want to be. Uh, and uh, and it's, it's really a never kind of ending process because you're always uh, trying to gain gain new experiences and meet new and different people to to pull from your uh, vast world of experiences so that you have more things to pull from that influences you that influence you towards uh, whatever character you may choose to be uh, to be given that day. So. Did I answer your question? Did I just ramble on and on about nothing? Yeah, I yeah, did. Was good, yeah. Okay, good. She's like, no, you rambled on about nothing. Nobody learned anything today. Uh, what else? More questions? Yes. Um, is there any advice that you give out to the upcoming voice actors? Don't do it. <laughs> if you want to be a voice actor, don't do it. Uh, I mean, you know, really, it's it's uh, it's like any other venture into the arts. As one who wants to be a professional, whether it's music or art, you know, art as a medium itself, or acting, uh, performance of some kind, uh, it, it's it's not like every other thing. <laughs> you know, there is there is no four hundred one k. Well, I mean, I guess there is when you join the union, I guess in some ways. But at the end of the day. When you're kind of on your own, you're kind of on your own out there. Uh, but my advice to those people who want to be an actor is to go be an actor. You know, uh, go take classes, be around like-minded people who also are actors or want to be actors. You know, at some point, me and my friends realized that we had to stop calling ourselves saying we had to stop saying that we wanted to be actors. At some point, we just had to call ourselves actors. At some point, you have to go, okay, well, I'm, I may be a bad actor right now, but I'm an actor, and this is what I'm gonna do. And so I'm gonna learn to get better at it. I'm gonna get out there, I'm gonna take classes, I'm gonna do some plays, uh, I'm gonna start a comedy troupe like my, my friends and I did, improv and sketch comedy, and start writing your own things and creating your own things, and that sort of that uh, amalgam of people and experiences and things begins to be expressed outwardly through uh, through your comedy or through your performance and those kinds of things and uh, so yeah gain life experience and do that with like-minded people people who want those same things who, who are looking to achieve those same goals as you because uh, in this business it's just not something you do alone it's way too tough way too tough what else? Yes, ma'am. I have one. So you mentioned before about being comfortable with making weird noises and yes. things like that. I think that's my weakest point because I, I live in a roommate situation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'll be upstairs in my closet recording and I have to make all these weird fight noises or whimperings and things like that. Like, how how do you get over the fact that, you know, like, oh, people are listening and that kind of thing or just... Just I would just go down there and say, look, y'all gonna hear some strange I, stuff. I usually warn them. It's not I'm what you know. think. I'm not dying. It's like, I usually <laughs> like preface it, but it's just, it's still hard. Well, yeah, I guess it, it probably, I mean, my only advice would just, just to, to let that go. Okay. Let that go. This is what you're doing. Yeah. And who gives a shit what they think? You know? I, I mean, worry about what they think after you've done you've done it so you know yeah, what i mean like i've been living with them for the past three years so they're like oh okay yeah i know what's going on so right it's just, it's but still so in the back of your head yeah, it's like, like god they think so i'm weird. so strange yeah I, yeah you, at just at some point you just gotta be I, I don't care anymore i've gotta let that go i gotta let that pass and i'm gonna go in there and uh i'm gonna make some strange noises and i'm gonna do that uh with you know, some intent in mind, some, you know, the, this is why I'm making that noise, you know, the, whatever it is, a whimper, a kick, a punch, yeah. a hit, a being kicked, punched, right. or hit, yeah. with all those things, so. What is that? Hey, it's Liesl. Anyway, my friend Liesl Wilkerson, she, she'll be joining us down in the autograph session earlier. She's from, uh, from Tekken and, uh, Grew up in Japan, was a longtime radio personality in Japan, speaks fluent Japanese. 
She's like a six foot tall blonde woman too. Yeah. I always imagine her walking around the streets of like Tokyo and just thinking, that must look so weird to everybody else. Anyway. Uh, we got half an hour in this panel left, guys. And I feel like I may have ran, ran out of stuff. But, uh, uh, so let's recap real fast. Auditions. Uh, show up on time. Uh, show off when you're there. Give give them some energy, and that's that's another good point. Is when it comes to acting or even auditioning, it's so much easier as a director to look at somebody and go, okay, you know what? We need to pull that back a little bit. We need to have that. We need to bring that down. We're just gonna bring that down here and there and there. It is very hard as a director. It's like I need you to give me more. I need you to be more and have more and give me more. Uh, that's harder to achieve than somebody who's already here. That person can be brought down. This person, hard to bring up. So really always make sure you're going in there with a lot of good energy. Uh, and that you're, you're, you know, I would say driving through that line. You know, go all the way through the, that line. Especially in anime too, you'll notice, uh, you may be on your audition sides too, there will be some reactions. So you have to start thinking about like, uh, there, you'll see things like open mouth, scream or uh, clenched teeth, you know, gasp or, you know, uh, clenched teeth punch or something like that. Uh, and so you always want to make sure that in some way maybe you're incorporating those within the line as well. Like what's going on in the line that before and after I have these noises. So maybe there's some noises in the middle that aren't scripted that I can kind of add some nuanced character personality to this, to this, to this, that that no one else did that day. Because believe me, after you hear many, many auditions, it's the one that added something interesting in there that separates you from the rest. And sometimes it's just a laugh or it's saying a line with a certain smile on your face or something like that. But uh, you, you had a question, Harley. Um, is there such thing as going or having too much energy? No. Too much, no? No, yeah, exactly what I'm saying. Yeah. I can take that person, I can bring them down. I can. I can bring that energy, I can, I can harness that energy in a direction that I think I want it to go. Uh, yeah, too much energy is always more, is, is always acceptable. Always acceptable, because you can, you can shape it. But you know, you ever had like a low energy friend that you wanted to get excited and get up and let's go have some fun? What happened? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> it was very hard to do. Yes. Yes. So while you were in an audition, is there any type of monologue that you want to pick that you feel that's more subtle for your audition? Like something that would, you know, impress the directors? Well, in a theater audition, you're going to do probably something a little different. In a theater audition, you're probably going to be reading lines from the play you're auditioning for. Maybe if you're auditioning for that particular theater or something because you want to be one of their actors that they call upon, uh, you may have a, a serious and a comedy monologue piece sort of prepped and ready to go. In the world of voice acting, excuse me, you will be auditioning for what is an audition side. You'll have a picture of that character, a description of that character, and lines that they want you to say as that character, along with maybe some notes on the side there too as to what's going on and why they are saying these lines. So you have some context as to who or why or what you're talking to. Uh, so, I would say that you just want to be nice and prepped and warmed up, uh, you know, at the end of the day, whatever acting program you've been through or acting classes or uh, that you've gone through, hopefully they have established you some sort of vocal warm-up. Uh, Josh, you remember ours, right? We had one, our, we had, and, uh, she has passed recently, our, our former vocal coach, Lynn Metric. Let me see, see if I can, I can remember this one. Y'all are going to be impressed. This one's cool. All right, it goes like this. <coughs> Excuse me. Eleven benevolent elephants met Lily and Lucy in Philadelphia and went to see Camelot in unique New York with guns and drums and drums and guns, which they kept in a bodega, bodega, bodega. They walked miles and miles and miles until they saw Manny and Nancy who danced hand in hand in the sand. Uh, then they came across brilliant Italian William from Topeka, who kept murmuring, Mama la papala, mama la papala. They begged him to join them. Will you, William, will you, William, will you, William? Can't you, won't you, don't you, William? Did you, would you, could you, William? 
And William simply said, Lily lolly, lily lolly. Then round the rugged rock the ragged rascal ran to be among Culligan and Caldillys and to let his tone hum down as easily as a sigh. Thank you. <laughs> uh, but stuff like that, that I, I mean, I've never forgotten that. And when I, that's exactly what I do when I need to kind of warm up. And I feel like I maybe got the mush mouth, you know, where words are kind of quite working out, you know. I do that one and really just, I love it, benevolent elephants. And I just try to emphasize that. And there's other vocal warm ups too. You want to hit your high register, you know. You want to kind of hit all registers, get everything flowing and moving up in there and, and warmed up, as it were. So, so that when you do get in the booth, there are not any surprises. And you're not slowing anybody down. Um, was there more to that question? Was that just the warm up? Yeah. Did that help? Did you write all that down? <laughs> the entire monologue. Okay. You memorized it? Yeah, that whole well, not. Got it memorized? Well, the melody. Sorry, Kingdom Hearts, anyone? Kingdom Hearts? Yeah. Name? I was like, if we shall uh, Paul St. Peterson. Right. Well, my buddy is Quentin Flynn. I just know that his, oh. his character Axel always goes, yeah. Got it memorized? I was like, You're a loser. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I love Quentin. Yes? Is it um, good practice to follow up on an edition? Or is no, just have let them contact you? Okay. That's okay. <laughs> just sign. Exactly. Wait, that, that's part of the whole get out, oh, go, okay. home. So just go home. It's over. Okay. Do your best to forget about that audition okay. as soon as you Surprise. walk out that door. Yeah. As an actor, you may have several auditions in the way in the day, definitely several auditions maybe during the week. Yeah. Overall, whether you know, you're doing film, voice, um, commercial, those kinds of things. Uh, but in the voiceover world, they're definitely upping their game as far as the at-home audition. Um, it's not my favorite because, again, acting is, is, is having people and to being able to bounce things off of people and, and hear their ideas and feedback. And auditioning at home with no one around is, is lame. I hate it. So I don't personally do them at home. I go up to Okotron, where Chris Abbott's, uh, excuse me, Chris Abbott, who's the voice of Vegeta Piccolo, that guy. Anyway, you probably have never heard of him. He's not that talented. No, yeah. He's kind of a big loser. Anyway, no, he's a good friend of mine. He's very, very funny, very cool guy. Uh, he uh, he has a studio, and I teach work some workshops there, uh, and uh, I just go there. And there, I have somebody to not stab it himself, but you know, and with a couple of the engineers and directors there, Raleigh and uh, Donald, or somebody, Stephen, uh, and I can do it that way. But the trend is. Especially for a lot of these video games, you know, uh, you're maybe play the video game Smite. Yeah. Anyone? Yeah, one person. <laughs> Smite. You play video games? What's your favorite video game? Pokemon. Oh. <laughs> nerd. <laughs> We're all nerds. Uh, <laughs> like, what's up, nerds? Oh wait, that's us. Okay. Uh, you never play, uh, you never play like Dragon Ball Z video games? Um, I have like this one for the DS from a while back. Uh-huh. That's basically it. Lame. Did you play Borderlands 2? My brother did, so I watched him play it. You watched him play it? Yeah. Did it, after watching him play it, didn't you go, I want some of that action? No? No. No? All right, you just like throwing Charizards at people? And... <laughs> when he was playing it though, like, um, Wait, you did the voice for that game, right? I was one, I was a character named Mr. Torg in that game. Okay, I was making sure that was the game, but he was playing it and I heard that voice and I like stopped and I was like, I know that voice. <laughs> and it took me only like a minute or so, I was like, I got this and so. <laughs> you were like, that guy does Mr. Satan's voice. Yeah. <laughs> you figured it out? That was funny, I was on a forum one time, you know, because I'm, I'm incredibly vain, so I look up what people are saying about me, just to confirm that they too also think I'm awesome. <laughs> I know, right? So I'm looking at this thing, and people are like, oh, I think maybe he's just doing an homage to Mr. Satan. <laughs> In a way, I'm like, 
an homage to Mr. Satan. The Torg was an homage to Mr. Satan. I'm like, no, dude, I even had to chime in. No, man, it's me. It's the same guy. It's me, dude. Anyway, uh, we got off on something there. Auditions, voice acting, the business of voice acting. Uh, yeah, let's talk about let's talk about the money for a second too. Money. When you make money in the world of voice acting, it's not like a paycheck you get. You know, it's all 1099. It's all contract labor work. So at the end of the day, you really want to, you really got to kind of pay attention to those finances because. 20% uh, of that is going back to the government, unless you can find very clever ways to write that off. And I tell you what, as an actor, you can write off everything. The air, the ground, <laughs> you know, the shoes you bought. Because everything you buy, and the car you drive, and the home you live in, is your office. These are stuff, These are this is my uniform for work, you know. Uh, these are I gotta have these shoes because you know whatever. If I wore these shoes to an audition, I write them off. I write them off anyway, whether I wore them to an audition or not. So uh, you, you gotta you know you just gotta know what it, what is legal to write off, what you can't write off. But anything you buy for something you use in the world that you that you that the world that is acting auditions. Uh, actually booking something, the, the gas you have to go to all those auditions or go to a booking that you got, all that stuff, write it off. So ultimately, you can probably hold on to most of that 20% that the government wants to take, but we live in Trump's America now, baby. They ain't gonna be no taxes. No taxes! No one's excited about that? <laughs> Me neither. All right, so. <laughs> Yeah, how'd it get all political all of a sudden, Josh? Right? Well, I did. I don't like Trump, that's why. You like Trump? I don't Good. think anyone at this convention. Anyone here like Trump? I wouldn't think anyone at this convention would like Man, Trump. you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. You never know. Mm. Oh. Well, that's all enough about politics. <laughs> if there's one thing I know is that I really, I really hate Republicans. But I really effing hate Democrats. <laughs> I hate them all. Anyway, voice acting, business. We talked about money, we talked about additions. Yes. So, say we're in a situation like Florida, where there okay. aren't a lot of studios or places you can go to to do auditions for things like that. Right. Like, are there websites or organizations that you would recommend? Uh, I will say, I mean, as far as some of the amateur stuff out there or i mean but i, I know some professionals that use it as well uh, and i don't completely like totally recommend it i just know some professionals that use it and i know they do well on it because the 400 dollars that you pay for the yearly service can usually be written off after one gig you book a gig you pay for the website for the year um, I always worry about that when your amateur goes and does that. Because 400 bucks, even though it's only for the whole year, it's still 400 bucks. And at the end of the day, maybe you're not quite ready to be getting stuff booked. So I don't necessarily recommend that. I recommend uh, when you're not necessarily in a market that has a lot of the voiceover stuff, get still get involved with acting and theater. And, and, and uh, you know, I, I guess maybe do your own thing. You know, you got Team Four Star out there, oh, yeah. Dragon Ball Z abridged and all that. You know, those guys literally live right around the corner from me. I, I walked into 7-Eleven the other day and Nick Landis was sitting right there. I'm like, hey, Nick, really hate you Team Four Star jerks. No, I didn't say, I did, I did say that, but you knew what I was joking about. Because uh, I really love those guys and I think they're really funny. And uh, I like what they've done with Mr. Satan, even though I begged them on multiple occasions to let me be Mr. Satan. I let me play at myself. It wouldn't be a parody. Right? But I, the thing was, is Mr. Satan was already a parody. I was already parodying, para, para, parodying? What is, how do you say that? Parody. I was already parodying. Parodying, yes. Parodying. Parodying. That doesn't sound right. I was already... Making, making fun of <laughs> uh, like a, co a culmination of 80s wrestlers. So it was already, that character was already a parody on 80s wrestling for me. And so 
I, I like what they've done with it though. He said something about slamming an energy drink and then going to fuck his hot Asian wife or something, and I'm like, oh my god, that's hilarious. And I don't think Hergo has a wife, so that's even better. No wife. Anyone? Anyone know the name of Hercule's wife? Ex-wife? Hercule's ex-wife? Mr. Satan's ex-wife? Hercule's ex-wife? Her name? Her name was Miguel? Or Michael? Or Angel? It was being translated. So, Mr. Satan and, an a and the angel had a baby. You know what that baby's name was? The devil. <laughs> That's so funny to me. I really do think that Akira Toriyama just wanted to have uh, a cartoon in which uh, large groups of people chanted Satan. I, bet, I, I just think he thinks that's funny. <laughs> he, and he's right, it's hilarious. Another thing that Team Four Star guys tackled recently in there. Oh, really? Yeah. Because Gohan goes, hey, do you think they know what they're saying? And then they just go, Satan, Satan. He's like, oh yeah, they totally get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, they know what they're doing. Uh, how much more time do we have? I'm just gonna start telling. I'm gonna start telling jokes, dirty jokes. No, you don't hear those. I don't have any dirty jokes. Do you have any dirty jokes, Harley? You don't have any dirty jokes. Yeah, oh, they're all old. Old dirty jokes. They're all old and racist too. I can't tell them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. Ah, oh, let's see. We talked about auditions. We talked about a little bit of the money. Um, you know, as a person who works in video games and anime, uh, I want y'all to know that nobody out there is really getting rich, uh, except for the people making the video games and the people making the anime. They're getting rich. Us voice actors are not getting rich off of those things. Uh, especially in anime, there is no residuals. In video games either. You know, if I do 10 hours on a video game and then it goes and sells 30 million copies they don't give me another check they don't even ask if i would like another check <laughs> they don't even consider like hey you know who we should give me some extra money after it sold 30 million copies the actors they did such a good job they didn't uh so in la though some of that is a little bit different um Especially with the union, when union work happens, you know there are there are companies that there are uh, the video games. I mean, that, that's a lot of what they've been fighting for lately. Is they want they want video games that sell a certain amount of copies for there to be a residual payout. Uh, to not just them, to everyone who made who, who took part in being that video game. Uh, it's not that it's not that you know the companies are going to tell you nobody buys video games because of the voice actors. And you know what, that's partially probably true. But, uh, you, do you go see a movie because of a certain actor all the time, or do you go see a movie because you think you might like that movie regardless of who's in it? Right? The latter one? You go because it's somebody in it that you like. No, no. Right, the latter one, yeah. So, at the end of the day, you, you become fans of these things after the fact. You didn't go pursue Borderlands because I was in it. You didn't go pursue Dragon Ball Z because Josh and I were in it. You know, but when you, when you do find these things, you're like, oh, cool, that's interesting. I like, to, I like those guys. I hope, you know, I'm going to kind of follow what they do. And I'll check out other things that they're in and stuff like that. So that does happen. But we should have some form of residual payment that takes place after a video game sells 2 million copies, especially after one sells 30 million copies. God damn, dude, I got to get no more money. Anyway, uh, and the real, the real money in the voiceover game, guys, is not anime, it's not video games. That's the fun part. That's the fun part, and that allows myself and other voice actors to come and do things like this and talk with you guys and hang out with you guys and travel around the country and, and the world, really, UK and Ireland and Australia. I mean, my friend Mike McFarland has been to Australia like three times. I'm like, hey, it's my turn, dude. Uh, but uh, the real money in the voiceover game is commercials. And uh, I don't necessarily know that you need an acting degree to be a good commercial uh, voiceover artist. Some of the top VO artists, uh, as far as commercials go, live right in Dallas-Fort Worth. 
Um, you know, like the Dodge Ram truck, Ford guy, all those guys. They live in Dallas. They make buku buck. You know, Dutch Ram. You know, just saying stuff like that. That when you put them in the booth to record some anime, they can't act their way out of a box. They still sound like that guy. Like, yeah, but no, I just need you to change it. Okay, I can do that. Goku, you're amazing. No, no, can you say it like a? I don't have to direct it, but but you see my point. Uh, if you want to be an actor, be an actor. Voice acting is just an aspect of that. And, uh, and you do get to, you know, it is, it is the fun side of voice acting. You know, taking on a character, um, playing around, having, you know, uh, hoping and putting it out there that, you know, somebody out there likes it, somebody watches it, somebody's going to take notice. But, what else? Josh, you're looking at me weird. Weren't you supposed to be on this panel with me? This would have gone much faster. We got 13 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What do you got, Pokemon girl? No? no. Nothing? No. What's your name? Brianna. Brianna. Correct. <laughs> Let's see if you can get question number two right. Oh. Uh, Brianna, how many Pokemon does it take to screw in a light bulb? I don't know. Probably just one. You can uh, use me neither. I just figured that you'd get a Pokemon that is a light bulb. Yeah, let's say Rotom is probably your Boom! See? We're on the same page. Uh, out of, uh, do you watch anime? Mm -hmm. What's your favorite anime? Um, well, Pokemon, Currently. Pokemon and Dragon Ball tie. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they tie? Yeah. Well, I will not allow that. <laughs> Dragon Ball ties with no one. So Dragon Ball is like... A little bit here, and then Pokemon's right there, right? Well, like, I, mean, I watched Pokemon, like, that was my first ever anything, basically, so. Right. Oh, it's like, I have to, but also, like, you know, I love Dragon Ball, so. <laughs> All right. Well, I find that acceptable. <laughs> what other anime? Any other anime? Not recently, no. No? You don't have time? You're busy? Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you do? Do you have a job? No. Why not? What do you do for money? Cat sit. Huh? You cat sit? Yeah. That's a good gig. Yeah. <laughs> Who's cat? My neighbors. Your neighbor's cat? I'm allergic though, so. Well, well, that's well, weird. She doesn't know that, but. You didn't tell her? No. Sacrifice. Yeah, you know. Why? Do you have to ever see the cat or you just go and like clean out the bowl and give it water and food and stuff? I know, yeah. There's two cats and I'm always with them, so. You're doesn't... always with them? Yeah, yeah. When I'm... And you're always sneezing? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That sounds like a terrible thing. Yeah, but I mean, it pays well. It does? What does she pay you to take her care of her cats? 20 a day, yeah. 20 bucks a day? Yeah, and I only go there for like... Man, I'd have some dead cats on my hands. <laughs> I'm not on purpose. I'd just be like... From neglect. <laughs> yes, neglect would be. I wouldn't kill the cats. Yeah. Uh, well, that's fascinating. You're still in high school? Mm -hmm. What grade? 10. Correct. You win. <laughs> Indeed. All right. Well, we learned a little bit about uh, Rihanna. I knew that. It was coming. <laughs> Isn't that right, Harley? I know where to find you. I hope. Hey. Boom. Uh, let's see. Guys, I need another question about voice acting. Think hard. Favorite voice. What's your favorite um, character you like to voice? That's it. Oh, yeah, I love that character too. It's my favorite. Mm. <laughs> mm. Uh, a lot of times it has to do with what I'm currently working on. Uh, I mean, Mr. Satan is always going to be at the top of my list. Uh, but I did really recently enjoy. Um, Playing the principal in assassination classroom, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed that. Uh, I really played a, a really uh, interesting character um, in uh, Rage of the Bahamut uh, Genesis. You ever see that, dude? You got to go check that out. Rage of the Bahamut Genesis. It's got myself and Ian Sinclair the leads. It's like a uh, it's like a spaghetti western. Meets meets uh, mythology and biblical creatures. 
uh, and it's this, it's this crazy underworld and uh, bounty hunters and uh, I highly recommend it. The animation on it is really excellent. Is that on Crunchy? Uh, you can get it on, uh, Funimation Channel has it streaming. So if you have Funimation Channel, Rage of the Hobbit, uh, Ian Sinclair and myself also has uh, Tia Ballard and uh, 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 Afia, 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 you know Afia. You know what I'm talking about? What other parts do they do? What are they known for? Are you looking it up? You're looking it up. Let's see. Let's see. <laughs> Rage of the Muhammad Genesis. There you go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we don't need, yeah, okay. We don't need to hear the whole story. Uh, let's see. Looking for a good. It's actually based off a video game. You know how like sometimes they really suck based off a video game? This one did not in any way, shape, or form. Uh, Ooh, second season, May 6th. They announced that. Ooh, nice year. Cool. We will be doing season two. Uh, it's uh, Kaichi Soto and Kaichi Hasagawa. Character design. What? Does it say? Okay, plot. There we go. Thank you. Uh, Starcy has a magical world where humans, gods, and demons mingle together in the past. Uh, the black and silver winged Bahamut and threatened to destroy the land. The humans, gods, and demons overcame their differences to fight together and sealed its power. Mm. Until the day a woman yeah, steals like, the gods and the half teeth. Anyway, it's all about us trying to kill this big bad thing. Mm. It's kind of like Star Wars. <laughs> Basically Star Wars, but better. That big bad thing look like a dragon? Huh? Oh, they like Bahamut. Yeah. Yes, Bahamut is a dragon. Yeah. He's like a demon dragon. I and it's got all, you know, it's got, it's got the devil, it's got... <laughs> all those good things. It's got, yeah, it's got, totally got Beezlebub, oh. I think the, and, uh, and then, I think, oh, I think Dick Mignogna is, oh. is the devil. <laughs> Dick Mignogna is Beezlebub in this. So, talking about that. Yeah? Everybody's talking about Dick. <laughs> <laughs> Who ain't talking about Dick? <laughs> what? Talking about Dick. <laughs> uh... uh yeah, Vic, he's a good guy. He wears weird pants and stuff, but I like him. <laughs> thank you very much. Sadly, I have to go to another panel, but thank you Oh, so we're about to end it anyway, dear. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you guys. Pleasure was all mine. I don't have one more question. Two. Who's your favorite uh, voice actor you've worked with? Hmm. Other than my boy, Josh? Because, you know... We're booing Satan. Yeah. That's kind of a thing. Uh, I think the person I'm really enjoying these days, oh, it's probably two guys. Chris Guerrero. Uh, check out his work. Look it up. Chris Guerrero. If you didn't see Toriko, he was the narrator in Toriko and he plays a lot of other stuff. Oh, yes. Yeah, he was the narrator in that. And uh, Ian Sinclair. I think Ian's the shit. I like him. That's, that's about all I got. I like them. Sabbath, he's a hack. Mike McFarland, loser. Yeah. Eric Vale, got a broken knee. Eric Vale hurt himself jumping on a trampoline. Really? Yeah, I can't respect a man after that. No. <laughs> We're all a little weird. Everyone's got their own little, I mean, Josh, I can't stand it when he's, I got nothing on Josh. I really like him. Like, I, I can't think of anything. I couldn't even fake insult him. You know? I'm sure he could tell you a few things about me. He'd be like, oh, oh here we go. You got a list? Get back. I'm about to bust out a scroll. <laughs> Roll it down the loud. First on the list. Well, guys, that's it for me. Thank you very much for coming out and joining us. Uh, I had a great time. And 